Skips for 12 rounds. Sullivan now number 10 in the IBF. There's the belt being held up by his manager, Steve Unisteri. Big James Gaines weighed in at the weigh in 296 pounds. Comes in with a 12 and 1 record. 10 knockouts. There's Obed Sullivan. 18 wins, one loss, one draw. 13 big KOs and major punching power, John. Well, Obed Sullivan, this is a fight where his jab has to come out. And in the past, he's been very inconsistent with it, already. One thing to watch for in this fight is that Gaines is susceptible to right uppercuts, and that's Ben's favorite Sunday punch. And they call him Big House Gaines, and we're going to go up to our ring introductions. J.J. Wright, take it away, J.J. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Corona Extra Heavyweight Explosion continues here at the Roxy. Are you ready for some more excitement, ladies and gentlemen? Tonight's main event is a 12-rounder for the IBF Intercontinental title. So if you're ready, let's meet our players in this little dance card. First of all, in the blue corner. With a record of 12-1-0, including 12 knockouts, weighing in at 296 pounds from Knoxville, Tennessee, give it up for James Gaines. And now, in the red corner, with a record of 18-1-1, checking in at 228 pounds from Houston, Texas, give it up for Opet Sullivan. Our referee for this main event will be Harold Gomes. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're ready, gentlemen, the dance floor is all yours. Let's get busy. All right, we take a look at the matchup here between Obed Sullivan and James Gaines. Gaines got a three-inch height advantage. John, he's got almost 70 pounds on Obed Sullivan. Three-inch reach advantage, and he's four years younger. We're going to see if any of it makes a difference. The only loss on James Gaines' record coming to a mod op dean in the IBF rules, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, only the referee can stop the fight, no being saved by the bell in any round, including the last. Gaines only lost to a mod op dean in a fight that I had mentioned earlier. I had him winning that fight. And op dean, as we know, and we've seen him here as we begin round number one, is a very incredible fighter. And there's that stiff jab you said that Obed Sullivan was going to have to use. Typically, Arnie, both these fighters are very slow starters. They vowed tonight to get off to an early start. Gaines wants to try to steal some rounds early against Sullivan. Sullivan has two first-round knockouts though in his career, one in his pro debut back in August of 92 against Michael Davis and the other against Curtis Shepard in June of 95 when he won the IBF Intercontinental title. He's had one fight since that no contest against Buster, Buster Mathis. Quick tune-up in June. June 27th down in Houston against Brad Roan. Stop Roan in four rounds. But the big test and the test that he looked very good in was the Mathis fight. Seems to be handily beating Buster Mathis then. They butted heads. Did you mention, John, something like 18 headbutts or something in four rounds? That's what uh, his corner counted upon watching a replay of the fight. And uh, Ben said he took something away from that fight. And it wasn't just a nasty cut. He said, I learned how to head punt and do it discreetly at times. Roll your head up underneath and then follow with a punch. And you got to give it back. Right now his jab looking very sharp. James Gaines not doing anything. Looking a little tentative, not using his own jab. He's got a reach advantage. He should be using it. Gaines is strictly an outside fighter with the jab. Neither fighter has ever been stopped. Gaines has some punching power himself. 10 KOs in his 12 wins. And, of course, that's Gaines in the black shorts. Obed Sullivan, he's in the gold with the red stripe. But Gaines' weight has fluctuated wildly throughout his career, as much as 70 or 80 pounds. I just don't think there's any excuse for a professional fighter to come into the ring. I don't care if he's 6'6 or not in this kind of condition. Now, he says he sparred five hard weeks down in Houston. And dropped over 50 pounds, but I think uh, 
another, that's, another that's, 40 would have done it, maybe. He was at Bill Benton's House of Pain, and Bill told me he showed up at over 340 pounds. So you did drop the weight. The problem was, why would he be allowed to get up to 340? But he hasn't fought since February when he lost to Abdeen. And with a fighter with a weight problem like that, you just can't let him off for that period of time. No, because you're, you lack self-discipline. When you let yourself get in this kind of condition, there's something missing from your personal regimen. Exactly. Coming near the end of round number one, about 20 seconds to go. Obed trying to tie up Gaines in the corner. Not much coming out of Gaines thus far in the fight as he throws a short left hook inside. And there he's uh, Sullivan trying to score with that short right uppercut. Come to the end of round number one, we watch James Gaines, 300 pounds of him, walking back to his corner. And you know, John, nevertheless, when you've got a 70 pound weight advantage over okay. your we're opponent, it's like having another third of a okay. heavyweight. We listen in. Inside, okay? yeah. 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 About a minute into the round, start looking to push off that trailing foot and quicken the jab. Oh, See, right. first round, first minute, single and double. Minute in, pick it up, and start pushing off that right foot. Nice and relaxed. Hands up. Round number two, we're scheduled for 12. This is for the IBF Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship, a title held by Obed Sullivan. He's in the gold shorts with the red stripe. James Gaines in the solid black. Fairly uneventful first round, though, if anything, John, I would say that Sullivan established that jab that you said he needs to win this fight and possibly stop Gaines. That's going to be his key punch in this fight. And Gaines does give up the body. I mean, he will allow, his, allow you to hit him in the body. And we're seeing Gaines come, trying to come out a little bit more aggressive with the jab here in the second round. He definitely needs to get busier. He got out jabbed in that opening session. And I'll tell you this, I watched in the Abdeen fight, Ahmad Abdeen went to James Gaines' body. It does nothing to him. There is so much weight around that it just doesn't seem to bother him. And Sullivan's corner has a plan for that, Arnie. They, they believe instead of hitting him around where all that flab is hanging off his uh, midsection, to hit him up a little higher around the rib cage area. And Chuck McGregor, trainer of Obed Sullivan, a very good strategist, and we're going to see if, the, if Obed can employ it. Right now, though, using a good stiff jab, hasn't really followed up much with the right. Two good body shots by Sullivan to the right side of Gaines. And the body shot didn't seem to do much to Gaines, but Obed jab looking real sharp. Gaines looking to go to the body himself. You know, I had breakfast with Sullivan this morning, and he really wanted to put everything together tonight that he's been working on in the gym. He told me, you haven't really seen the best Obed Sullivan. I think he even feels as good as he looked in that four rounds against Mathis. He took that fight on short notice. Lou Savarese, of course, was supposed to be in that fight. Obed went in there, said, I'm ready. I'm in the gym all the time. A little disappointed, though, over the fact that they had the no contest. Well, a lot disappointed. Working in cloud close. About 40 seconds to go in round number two. Sullivan just snuck in a uh, right uppercut. Didn't have a lot of authority behind it. There's the left hook. We're seeing a, a, a variety of punches tonight from Bed. Just moving a fighter, though, like gains around the ring can be exhausting. I like the way he's doing it. The way he's showing him just enough lateral movement, not allowing gains to bore in with that jab. See how he keeps turning him? Real subtly. Nice uppercut starting to work in close. Gaines starting to let loose a little bit. Very slow start of James Gaines. We're coming to the end of round number two. This is scheduled for 12 on Heavyweight Explosion. I'm Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal along with John Saracino. Hope you're enjoying our show thus far. Okay, 
I need to move my head or I get inside, okay? I'm so back now. Give me a little short jab inside, okay? And we gotta let our hands go once we get inside. We gotta fight, okay? Start throwing two at a time. And coming to them, alright? Behind that jab, close your distance. Don't try to come over the top. Shoot the right hand straight from here or under here. When you're down and you're, you've got your feet bent, touch with right hands and zip hooks to the head. Touch right hands, zip hooks to the head, and put your weight back on your left foot and dig it underneath. But other than that, make him see Jab City this round. That jab is really wearing him out. Step in, step forward. Snap it. A little bit busy for me, all right? Pretty good. Chuck McGregor looking for Jab City as we start round number three from Obed Sullivan in the corner of James Gaines just asking him to get busy. James Gaines is one of the most laconic looking individuals I've ever seen in my life, particularly in a boxing ring. Looks like he's going to fall asleep when he gets off the stool. Very relaxed. Landed a nice right in close, lands another right on Obed Sullivan right now. Chuck wanted Jab City, but he was also talking about... Obed landing some left hooks, kind of touching that right. Look for that right hand lead, but he's not doing anything. He's doing the exact opposite of what Chuck McGregor asked him to do. Yeah. Chuck wanted him on the outside. Instead, Obed's rumbling on the inside. This is what he did against Buster Mathis. He vowed he wouldn't get caught in that trap again. Dropping a couple of low blows in there also against James Gaines, the taller man. You see, Arnie, he really wants to throw that right uppercut against Gaines. Doing exactly the opposite of what Chuck McGregor was asking for this round, but there's the left hook that Chuck was asking for. And you know what? He's found out at the end of that last round, and he could hit Gaines at will with the left hook, and he's going right back to it. But again, you're trying to move a 300-pound man, John, and it's another third of a heavyweight. Well, you've got a 70-pound weight advantage. That's why McGregor preaches patience. You've got to break him down step by step. Or... Pound by pound or donut by donut, whatever the case is. Obed not looking patient right now. There's a lot of pounds to break down pound by pound here, Chen. Might be here a couple of months. More than halfway gone in round number three. This is scheduled for 12. Gaines needs to get that right hand up, Arnie. He's getting hit too much with the left hook. There he comes back with a three-punch combination on Sullivan. Obed gets a warning, and I'll tell you, Harold Gomes, referee, showed a lot of patience in giving that warning because he dropped in about another three low blows before that. And Gaines has had a very rough spring two months ago, Arnie. He had a bullet rip through his right leg from an automatic weapon, a Tech 9. They told him at the hospital if he wasn't such a big bone guy, the bullet would have shattered his leg. Instead, it merely ricocheted and went out the other side. It was a drive-by shooting in his hometown of Knoxville, Tennessee. He's lucky to even be here tonight. Incredible story. 30 seconds to go in round number three. No knockdowns thus far in the fight. That's IBF Intercontinental Champ Obed Sullivan. He's in the gold. James Gain in the solid black. Coming to you from the Roxy in Boston on Heavyweight Explosion. I'm Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal along with John Saracino. This is not the fight that Gaines wants. He does not want an inside fight with Obed Sullivan. He needs to get back outside and establish a jab. There you see him trying to do it a little bit, but Sullivan is allowing him no breathing room. James Gaines walks very calmly back to his corner. Pull out, you pull out, you still get back up tight, okay? You get enough to when I pull out, I gotta stay down, okay? So stay a little bit lower, okay? Keep the knees bent. That's the only thing you gotta do, keep the knees bent, keep the combinations flowing, okay? Yeah. You got to throw the numbers, all right? You're doing good, okay? Keep the combinations coming. And keep the head moving, that's another thing. Yeah. It's very important that we keep that head moving, okay? Yeah. Don't be so stationary in front of the man. And give me a little bit more angles, okay? Right. Give me this left side here, give me a little bit more angles, then what you give me, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drive it up take your shoulder right to him. More jabs. Start the round out by jabbing, taking right hands. Now pull over here when you take the right hand. And quick hooks to the head. Then touch on the side and another Action quick hook to the head. Round number three. three. Obed Sullivan, side. James Gaines getting some shots inside. Obed, for whatever reason, not wanting to throw the jabs that Chuck McGregor is asking him to throw. As we start round number four, McGregor said, start the round off jabbing. Let's see if Obed works. He's thrown one. 
trying to stay in the outside. Nice right hand lead by Gaines. Then a right hand lead lands. Arnie, some of our boxing fans may have recognized the man standing in front of James Gaines in his corner. It was Dwight Pratchett. Pretty good fighter in his time. weight contender who had Julio Cesar Chavez going a few years ago. And Pratchett wants his fighter not to make himself such a target. He's already six foot six. He needs to bend his knees and get a little bit lower. He's too stationary. He's too easy to hit. Obed tries the uppercut. Eats a left hook, though, for his efforts. Obed starting to carry his hands a little too low. Yeah, he just started that this round. And Gaines got 10 knockouts in his 12 wins. Has some punching power. Anytime you're 300 pounds, you connect with that weight behind you. It's going to hurt. Neither fighter, of course, has ever been stopped. Both fighters have one loss on their record. I don't believe Obed has ever been down as a pro. I don't believe so either. Obed's one loss coming in his third pro fight to Jonathan Grant, the four-round decision. He's got one draw against Ahmad Abdeen, a common opponent for both fighters. Gaines, in my opinion, beat Abdeen, but Abdeen got the decision. It was a close fight either way. And Gaines, the best of my knowledge, has not been down either in his pro career. Obed Sullivan, not with the greatest hand speed in the heavyweight division, certainly not a Mike Tyson, but has above average hand speed for a heavyweight. Tremendous punching power, though. Obed Sullivan, very hard puncher. Very good listener, according to Chuck McGregor. He's a very good student. Also started his pro career very late. Back in August of 92. Same month, James Gaines started his pro career, but he's three years younger than Obed Sullivan. Sullivan learned to box in the Marines. As did... Former heavyweight champion. Time for ring trivia here. Putting me on the spot. Ken now. Norton. Kenny Norton. What a great trilogy. With Muhammad Ali. And of course the man who had his number, George Foreman. And another fighter who briefly held the heavyweight championship, who learned to box in the service, I believe the Army, was Bone Crusher Smith. Good right. Snaps back the head of James Gaines. Doesn't want to lay on the ropes and let Obed tag off on him. Obed, but you have to think if Obed would just take a step back, John, and I, just come off that jab, double on the jab, and come with the right. What McGregor's been telling him to do, he can stop games. He's Good left hook, though. Arnie, that's what he's looking for. He's looking for the knockout punch. He wants to stop this kid. Another good round for the IBF Intercontinental Champion, Obed Sullivan. Here's what you're doing. Deep breath. You're smothering yourself. You got to give yourself a little bit of room. Okay. When you're inside with those touch punches, after you're touching two or three times, do a shot bend roll out. Touch, do that bend roll out, and as soon as you get the distance on it, spring right back with a right hand hook, or do the roll out and spring back with a hook on the head and bring it with smoke. Bring it with some serious smoke. And double up on them hooks. But after you're punching, like I had mentioned earlier, Chuck McGregor saying, it's okay to fight inside, but come back, take that step backwards, give yourself some room to punch. And we're going to take a look. Here's the kind of action that was taking place on the ropes in round number four. He needs a roll and step out with a hard right hand. Exactly. He stepped out there and, and hit him with the left hook. Exactly right. We start round number five. What's going through James Gaines' mind? He's got to get started. Unofficially, I've got it four rounds to zero. A shutout at the moment for the champion, Obed Sullivan. Sullivan's in the gold shorts, red stripe. James Gaines, solid black. No knockdowns thus far in the fight. No fighter seriously hurt. You know, to get ready for this fight, Sullivan sparred with a Tongan heavyweight, Haya Wolfgren, who's right now in Atlanta at the Olympics. 6'4", 325 pounds. Trying to emulate the style of Gaines, which is always something. Gaines eats a left hook, comes back with a right of his own. What I'm noticing here is Obed does take that step backwards, but when he takes it backwards, he drops his hands, allowing Gaines to hit him. So when Chuck McGregor said, take the step back, give yourself some punching room, he didn't say drop your hands when you take the step backwards. Got to remember your defense at all times. 
Schedule for 12 rounds. Neither fighter has been the 12 round distance. Gains 10 rounds twice in his career. Obed Sullivan only 10 rounds once, and that was with Marion Wilson, Mo Wilson, back in December of 95. A very close fight, by the way. Majority decision win for Obed Sullivan that night. When you talk about good fighters with under 500 records, Mo Wilson takes the prize. But we're halfway gone in round number five. James Gaines really starting to land some punches now. Yeah, but you know what? Sullivan's really avoiding a lot of those blows. And they might look like that on TV, but... Block and parry. That's what he's trying to do here. Maybe catch Gaines coming in. Maybe the uppercut here would be a good punch to throw. I'm looking for some of that ribcage strategy that you said that they were going to employ. So far, when he's thrown to the body, he's thrown low, and has actually been warned by referee Harold Gomes for low blows. He needs to throw around the bra section more. A little higher up. There was that good uppercut. Much better round for James Gaines. You see how Sullivan uses his elbows and his forearms to get distance and leverage when he punches. Missed with that right uppercut. Gaines landing some good blows right since February, as John mentioned. Got caught in a drive-by shooting. Last fight, he's got lost to Maradi. What was that about? Maybe some of the rust is wearing off now as we come to the end of round number five. A much better round, possibly a winning round for James Gaines. Go back to the corner with James Gaines. Dwight Pratchett has to be a lot happier with what he saw in round number five than what he'd seen in the earlier rounds. You feel too tall, okay? But you gotta work that now. Keep it coming. Swallow it. Okay, so we get down just a little bit more. Hands bigger more because he even for little punches, you know what I'm saying? A little short jab. You got to keep the head moving. Give me angles, okay? Give me a deep angle. When you catch him, they hook, hook, do something back. All right? Yeah. I got ice in my dick. Fifth round okay, action. When he uses that jab, John, but you look at that, he threw one jab, didn't follow up. If he would have doubled up, it would have been fine. And dropped that left, almost got caught with the big right from Gaines. We start round number six. It's a scheduled fight for the IBF Intercontinental Championship. Title held by Obed Sullivan, who's in the gold shorts with the red stripe. James Gaines in the solid black. We're coming to you from the Roxy in Boston, Massachusetts. Gaines opening up here as he's trying to trap. Oh, and he lands a good right. On Obed Sullivan, he's got Obed holding on there. Lands another right. Followed by a left and another right. And he's getting Obed's attention, and Obed shouldn't be fighting back right now. John Letty should be trying to clear his head, give some movement. Don't sit there and trade with Gaines right now. I think Obed's fine. I'm not so sure. No, I think he's all right. I think he wants this kind of fight secretly. I think he wants him to, to stop this big kid. He doesn't go the distance, Arnie. He told me earlier this morning he had to go the distance with James Gaines. Well, I got to tell you, having seen his only 10 rounds go, I think he's a little concerned about going the distance. Gaines is starting to, he was holding his mouth open during the last round, the fifth round, a round that I gave to Sullivan. I've got Sullivan winning. He's paying for all that lasagna he loves to eat. That's his favorite dish. Well, I gave round number five to Gaines. I've got Sullivan up four rounds to one again, unofficially on our scorecards. As we're about halfway gone in round number six. First half of the round, another good one for Gaines. Obed can throw one jab at a time, not doubling up on that jab. Not necessarily following the instructions of trainer Chuck McGregor, who was looking for Jab City several rounds ago. Can't seem to get his fighter to get going on that jab program. He did it early in the fight in the first, second round, but he's gotten away from Another warning with time for elbows. And he's been using those throughout the fight and Ref finally got a warning from the referee. Referee Harold Gomes gave a warning earlier to 
Obed Sullivan for low blows. A little tape coming loose on the left glove of Obed Sullivan. Tries to land a right uppercut. The uppercut totally getting smothered. Starting to use some of that headbutting that he learned from Buster Mathis. <laughs> About 20 seconds to go here in round number six. Gaines trying to hook off the jab. Obed okay, Sullivan sits down. Know. They had to bring in a folding yeah. chair. The stool collapsed. One and two times. Yeah, it's not talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Leave it all up and you're one and two times. Well, check them yep. tags on the, on the wrist. Yes, yeah, the, the, uh, the boss. It's not the tape. Well, put them on the table here. Okay. Uh, start doubling up on that. And dropping uh, right hands and short, short looping right hands. But a short looping right hand. But move in behind the jab. You're letting this 300 pound guy lay back, man. It's tiring. Here we got action for round number six. Back. Watch these yeah, elbows. Watch your elbow. Of Obed Sullivan. Because he just got a warning, and there was that elbow. Harold Gomes just walked over to his corner, gave him another warning. Good body work there by James Gaines. Holding his own the last two rounds with the champion, Obed Sullivan. So we begin round number seven. A reminder this is scheduled for 12. It's for the IBF Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship. Title Sullivan won. In a one-round knockout over Curtis Shepard back in June of 95. He's defended that title three times successfully. One punch Sullivan needs to work on is that straight right hand. He has a tendency to pound and club with it. Well, let's see if again, if he listens to Chuck McGregor. Chuck's telling him the right things to do. Obed's not necessarily doing it. We mentioned ourselves. He said double up on the jab. Obed not doubling on the jab. Well, I, I like the way Obed is fighting this kid. I think he's showing him different looks at different times in the fight. And I think it's making it difficult for Gaines to adjust to those styles. He's boxing from the outside. Not as much maybe as McGregor wants, but here you see Sullivan going back to the inside. And Gaines doesn't want to be on the ropes there. Not at all. Except the only thing I'm going to question at this point, in spite of the fact that we think that Gaines isn't in any kind of shape necessarily, he has does has never shown a stamina problem even when he came in heavy. He is a good 10-round fighter. Obed, on the other hand, I haven't seen in the late rounds except for that Mo Wilson fight. So he's an unknown commodity when you get past round number 10 or even into round number 10. But I think Chuck's telling him the right strategy that he could have Gaines out of there. Double on the jab, move in on that second. He didn't double again there. You're not going to beat Gaines throwing one jab at a time. No knockdowns thus far in the fight. We're in round number seven. Neither fighter's ever been stopped in their career. Both fairly heavy punches. Gaines, 10 knockouts in his 12 wins. Obed Sullivan, 13 knockouts in his 18. Might have had a 14th knockout had that fight continued with Buster Mathis Jr. I'm of the opinion he would have stopped Mathis probably in the next round. He was getting ready to go in that fight. Gaines deceptively fast hands for a heavyweight his size. 6'6", well over 300 pounds. Probably 315 as he's going into the ring tonight. And remember, he's got a three-inch reach advantage over Obed. Not just the height, but he's got the reach advantage. Doesn't exert a lot of energy. One of the reasons he just doesn't move all that and much. And you see how he's just pushing Sullivan around with both hands on top of Sullivan's shoulders. That size differential and weight advantage for Gaines, trying to use it to his advantage to set up Sullivan for a punch. Seemed like the mouthpiece was coming out there or something. Referee Howard Gomes called time. Time back in. We almost come to the end of round number seven. Sort of an uneventful round for both fighters. When their fatigue setting in as Gaines opens up big at the end of round number seven and lands a four-punch combination on Obed Sullivan.
Oh, Gaines coming back a little bit. We got to get busy in what we're doing. We let him slip away. It's a real close fight. We need to win these rounds all night, okay? We got to win. Okay, we need to win them big. Let that jab go. Let's go to work. Let your hands go, okay, James? Let them go. We need to win, okay? okay? Don't worry about it. You ain't safe. We work good in the gym, okay? <laughs> we ain't safe to go. How do you, how do you feel? Good. Okay, you, you feel good? Let, show me, okay? When, when you're inside and ain't nobody punching, punch. Okay. Show, show, me, show me that you feel good, okay? Yes, you sir. gotta let the hands go, okay? Let them go. And keep the knees in the hands. And there you see that good combination punching by Gaines getting off on Sullivan. Round number eight. Schedule well, for 12. Hey, Gaines winning the last two rounds, Arnie. Well, interestingly enough, I gave Gaines rounds five and six. Problem was in round number seven, in my opinion, he threw that great combination of four punches at the end of the round, but I thought Sullivan was beating him throughout the rest of the round. But uh, unofficially, I've got the fight 68-65, Obed Sullivan, certainly within reach right now for Gaines. His corner telling him it's close. We've got to start winning some of these rounds, and that's, of course, Obed in the gold with the red stripe. James Gaines in the solid black. If you're just joining us, no knockdowns thus far in the fight. Triple left hook by Sullivan, who has his head glued to Gaines's upper body. It's just so hard to fight a man this size. Some of the fighters that I've managed, John, I've been offered James Gaines, and I said, I just don't want my guy having to give up 80 pounds, 70 pounds in a fight. It's like fighting an extra half a person, a third of a person. I see some blood, Arnie. It looks like he's his shoulder. I don't know. If, and he's caught Obed Sullivan, Obed Sullivan cut along the right eye brow. And that's the same area where he was cut by Buster Mathis by the headbutt. And what's so, going to be interesting to watch, Harold Gomes hasn't declared whether that's been from a headbutt or not or from a punch. I tell you what, they were real close at the beginning of this round with their heads going at it. I got to believe that's how it was open from an unintentional headbutt. We don't know for sure. But again, Harold Gomes has to make that determination. It'll be interesting to see what he says. We're already past the sixth, sixth round mark. We would go to the scorecards if that's the case. If it's not, and he's got to stop because it's caused by a punch, then Gaines, of course, would win the fight as we're coming on the one-minute mark in round number eight. I think so, uh, unless the referee saw it clearly, I think you're gonna be, it would be ruled accidental would be my guess. And uh, that would be to Sullivan's advantage at this point in the fight because I think clearly he's ahead in the fight. Again, the official ruling on whether it was or wasn't. And Gomes staring at that eye right now. Sullivan's got to have some offense now to keep him off. Just took a peek over at Chuck McGregor. Has a very worried look over in his corner. Gaines starting to go to work on that eye also. And that blood is in Warning. a position. It's a blood's in a position where it's kind of going into the eye a little bit from the side. Warning from Harold Gomes for both fighters about headbutting. Obed starting to get a little wild on the inside. He ate an uppercut from James Gaines. Well, Sullivan was taught how to headbutt by Mathis. Maybe he didn't learn the right way. You're supposed to get the other guy hurt. A lot of work now in the corner of Obed Sullivan. Chuck McGregor going to go to work on that eye. Stay nice and relaxed. It's not that bad. It's just a little bit. It's not bad at all. It's to the side. Deep breaths. Okay, that happened because you're getting your head inside. Yeah. Where did I tell you I wanted your head? Outside. Outside, outside with the jab and what? Quick right hand. Yeah. Knees bent. You're straightening up too much. Let's really bring that jab. Let's really, really bring that jab. Stay nice and relaxed. Here, drink a little water. Bring that jab. Yeah, he had me too. The boat does yes, the same thing. Yes, sir. Keep your head yes, out. Yes, sir. Keep your head out and jab. Put it to the side. We're going to take a look here. So it was a punch, apparently. But we're going to have to get an official determination. Make sure that's how that was it. Harold Gomes sees it. Well, he warned Sullivan. And you heard Sullivan in military fashion repeatedly saying, yes, sir, yes, sir. 
Very close fight right now, John. Unofficially, I've got it 77-75. Obed Sullivan. So do I. The fight has totally changed, though, with this cut and Gaines closing the gap midway through this title fight. Notice how, though, in between rounds, Chuck McGregor, very calm, trying to soothe his fighter, not let him panic, telling him the cut's not that bad. Same time. Why isn't he outside with the jab, though, Arnie? He's really not listening to Chuck McGregor. He hasn't listened to Chuck since the first round. Chuck, again, jab city. We haven't seen jab city. We haven't seen double up on the jab like he asked for. Oh, so maybe. Tape loose now on the glove of Obed Sullivan. They haven't gotten into using the gaffer's tape around here like they have in the past. In other markets. Sullivan needs to go back to that jab, Arnie. We've been preaching that all night, as Chuck McGregor has. And Bet has wanted to do it his own way, which was to fight on the inside. Now he's up on his toes, finally staying on the outside, doubling on that jab. See if he can follow over the top with the right. James Gaines just staring at that cut. You can see him. Gaines sticking that jab right into that eye. He's just really using it as target right now. Obed using the jab well, though. Got to keep that stick going from the outside, though, Sullivan. Good body work from Gaines. All right, this is turning into a very interesting in this fight. Oh, right hand by Sullivan found the target. Gaines Snapping comes, Gaines' his head. But Gaines comes right back as we're more than halfway gone in round number nine. Next. Remember, Obed Sullivan's only been 10 rounds once in his career. He's never been 12. Gaines been 10 rounds twice. Past 10, they're both in the proverbial uncharted waters. This is for the IBF Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship. The crown belongs to Obed Sullivan. He wants to hold on to it and have his fourth successful defense. Finally won from Curtis Shepard in a one-round knockout. That was back in June of 95. The cut is reopened, but as McGregor told his fighter, it's not necessarily in the worst position. It doesn't appear, appear to be too much blood flowing towards the eye that would impair Sullivan's vision. It's more of a mental thing with a lot of fighters. And for good reason. When you're cut, you see your own blood. Now, when you watch other fights in other corners, and you know, in spite of the fact that Chuck's trying to calm him down and give him, you know, peace of mind, you've watched other fights where guys' eyes are torn open in their corners telling him, it's okay, don't worry about it. Happened in Evander Holyfield against Larry Holmes. Evander pan panicked a little bit in that fight. It had never been cut before. How about Chavez in the Randall fight? Uh, we come to the end of round number nine. We're scheduled for 12. Not a bad round again for the challenger, James Gaines. <laughs> Tough round to call, John. You know, Very close round. I'm going to cop out and go even on that round, making the fight 87-85 at the end of nine. You're fine. Ninth round. You're winning the fight. You're winning the fight, but you're not doing it anymore. I want to see a little bit. Breaking down on him. He's breaking down on him. He's not going to break all the way down unless you push him. Uh -huh. Okay, what's pushing him is those jabs. You're walking left, you're walking right, you're popping the jab, you're throwing stiff jab. Keep that working. Walk left, slip back this way, up jab. Walk back this way, up jab. Walk back this way, faint. Double stiff jab. Get off the faint, step up with a jab, short right hand right behind him. Then roll an angle. Keep walking around and hook and moving. Come on. Talking about jabs. Here's Obed's. Throws that jab. The left doesn't land real solid, but it's set up to right. And that's what he needs to do, John. That was his best right hand of the night. <laughs> Round number 10. This Gaines. one scheduled for 12, and the tape comes loose again in Obed Sullivan's glove. But again, they don't use the gaffer's tape up here. It's been working real well in other cities. Yeah. They should be putting the gaffer's tape around that glove. It's waterproof. Gaines with a newfound confidence. Okay. Sullivan trying to stare him down. Gaines will have none of it. Just looks the opposite direction. Don't be in front of him, Ben. Don't be in front of him. Move on. Action resumed here. Sullivan in the gold shorts, red stripe. 
James Gaines, all 300 pounds of him in the black shorts. Yep. Very close fight unofficially, 87-85 on my card, John. That's, not the same for you? That's what I have it. Before this fight, Gaines's corner basically called it a crossroads fight. Can you imagine that? 25 years old, Gaines has 13 fights, and they're telling him, this is it. You need to really step it up and show something in this fight. Nationally televised pay-per-view bout. And after a slow start, he's starting to show us something. And pretty much the pattern of a lot of his distance fights. Again, he's been the 10 round distance twice. Once against Tim Noble in a winning effort. Mad Abdin in a losing effort in a very close fight. Obed Sullivan 10 rounds only once. Winning a majority decision against Mo Wilson. That was back in December. Obed Sullivan picking up the pace this round. Chuck McGregor telling him he's got to get busy. Said he's winning the fight. Very close at this point. Gaines also needs to bend those knees and get a little leverage when he punches Army. Now, even though uh, he may have been blocking most of those punches, it doesn't look good to be laying on the ropes with the other guy being the busier of the fighter. To be giving a round away in a very close fight. Again, another good matchup here by Bill Benton. A lot of people thought that Obed would possibly walk through James Gaines, and Gaines really giving him a lot of trouble here tonight. You see Sullivan using the left hook, the uppercut, the right hand, trying to mix it up to keep Gaines off balance. Gaines still standing very upright, making himself an available target for Sullivan. You really got to wonder those that excess baggage around Gaines's waist, how that is going to affect him here in the final three rounds. Certainly holding his own right now, but a very good round though for Obed Sullivan, certainly the busier of the two here in the round number 10. Well, Sullivan is taking this round, he's going to the body and he's going upstairs. Neither Gaines or Obed ever passed 10. As we're coming to the end of round number 10, they're both going to be someplace they've never been before, and here's something they've never heard before. Round 11 as Gaines finishes strong, but not strong enough, in my opinion, to take the round. Give me, give me everything you got, okay? I need it all, okay? I need it all. I need to go for broke. Okay, so give me everything you got. You need to know. That's it. Everything you, you got know. left, I need you to give it to me, okay, Jay? Everything you got everything. left, give it to me, okay? Give me everything. I'm getting up until work right now, you understand me? Okay, we're going to come around so you can use it, okay? I know it's hurting. Wait till it comes around. Okay. When it comes around, you see it? You got to turn it right. hard, okay? Okay. Let's suck it up with something, all right? Let's suck it up, okay? Let's suck it up and use it up, okay? okay? But you got to get wrong. You got to get wrong. Get this time wrong. we got to get nasty, okay? Get when chap when chap sit around, say, okay, Jane? Real okay. nasty, all right? Get nasty. Okay. Get real me. Okay. It's gonna make us a break. It's like hell. Okay. Nasty. 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 Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship. Obed Sullivan, the champion. He's in the gold shorts with the red stripe. James Gaines in solid black. And we heard between rounds, Arnie, Dwight Pratchett's urgency to James Gaines. Go for broke. I think the way we have it scored right now, he's going to need a, a stoppage in this fight to win. I've got him trailing by three points with two rounds left. Certainly a knockdown, and he is. He's letting those punches go, and he's eating... He's landing on Obed Sullivan in close. Obed landing some low blows there. He doesn't want to lose a point at this point. But the fight, he's been warned by Harold Gomes for low blows. At this point, Sullivan should be boxing with the jab and moving, using that lateral movement and not staying on the inside. you got to think he's winning the fight at this point. And I don't think this is, although he scored well from, from in close tonight, I don't think he has to put himself in harm's way in round 11. And 
again, no knockdowns in this fight so far. Neither fighter has ever been stopped in their career, both having one loss on their record, losing by decision. Gaines' last fight went the full 10 rounds against Ahmad Abdin, but that was back in February. This is his first start since then. Those body shots, Arnie, are really starting to take their toll. Gaines snuck in a right uppercut there. He is really gasping for air. Well, and again, you have to point out, he's never been in a round 11 before, but for that matter, either is Obed Sullivan. Gaines, though, only in his second fight, though, in 1996. This is the sixth start for Obed Sullivan. He eats another uppercut in close, but sends one back to James Gaines. But Gaines did not do tonight what his corner planned to do, and that was a fast start. He gave away a lot of the early rounds and could come back to haunt him. And there's the right uppercut again by Sullivan, right on the point of the chin, snapping Gaines' head back. Gaines fading here in round number 11. Johnny started out strong in this round. Obed coming on. And it's a, it's a very important round at this point in the fight. But left hook lands by Obed. Curious strategy at this point in the fight by Sullivan. Seems to be working though in this round. Dangerous but working. Ooh, he just missed with that right uppercut. Gaines lands three, four punches of his own inside. Again, too little too late though to take the round. Landed a good shot right on the temple of Obed Sullivan. Prime knockout position. Didn't have an effect at Obed. Well, John, as we're about to go into the 12th and final round, I've got it 107, 103. Obed Sullivan, you've got it identical. Although I don't think we arrived at the same... We arrived at the same conclusion, but maybe scored a little bit differently in a couple of those rounds. He's ready to go. What I want you to do is use the jab, stay on that line. Keep your distance. Give me a deep breath and hold it for a three count. Work behind the jab. He's open for right hands and hooks. Get your distance behind that jab and feints. Keep the head moving coming in. When you sit on this side, when you sit on this foot, shoot the hook. When you sit on this foot, throw the right hand. Look at me. Stay on balance. Stay on balance. And shoot. Twelfth and final round for the IBF Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship. That's Obed Sullivan. He's in the goal with the red strike. James Gaines in black. There's been no knockdowns thus far in the fight. Both John Saracino and myself, Arnie Tokyo Roosevelt, have been 107-103. Obed Sullivan. Obed's done it his way, though, John. He hasn't necessarily listened to Chuck McGregor, and he's not listening to him here in the twelfth and final round. He wanted him to use the jab. He says... Gaines could go in this round. Obed's going in close and slugging it out. Yeah, to put Sinatra across the front of his trunks. He's doing it his way. Gaines waking up his jab here in the 12th round. First time we've seen that jab since around round number five, in spite of the fact that he's got a three-inch reach advantage and a three-inch height advantage. I wonder what kind of fighter James Gaines could be if he could tame his appetite. Well, he certainly has boxing skills. As recently as April of 94, he was down to 264 pounds against Kenny Kirkwood. Stopped him in the fifth round. Looked, relatively speaking, spelt for the fight. But, uh, you know, I'm not sure that that's necessarily what it's all about anyway. Well, partner, I disagree with you. I think he'd be a much better fighter without carrying around an extra 40 or 50 pounds. Oh, left hook by Sullivan. He's repeatedly hit him with those tonight, Arnie. But you have to think also, as Gaines, in spite of the weight problems, does he get moved too fast? Should he be in with an Obed Sullivan after 13 fights? Should he be fighting Ahmad Abdin, who he almost beats? But imagine 
50 pounds lighter and 10 pounds from now where he could be if he was fighting these maybe, guys. Maybe this is one way of his management convincing him that if indeed he really wants to box professionally, he's going to have to do it another way. But I'd also have to question, he hasn't fought since February of 96. He got shot in the interim, and the first fight back you give him is with Obed Sullivan, the seventh-ranked heavyweight in the world. Not necessarily good thinking on the part of his management. Not if you're serious about bringing gains along properly. Well, they may feel it's time for him to be festive. And certainly he's getting that test tonight from Obed Sullivan, trying to establish himself in the heavyweight division. Looks like we're going to go to the distance. We're in the 22nd mark in round number 12. Almost a definite victory here for Obed Sullivan. Not able to stop James Gaines. No knockdowns in the fight. And there you have it. That's the end of the bell. End of the fight. Over the 12th round. James Gaines raises his hand, but I think that's just to say I've been here for the full 12. Unofficially, John Saracino and myself have been 117, 112. Obed Sullivan looks like he will retain and defend his IBF Intercontinental title for the fourth time successfully. Again, not necessarily listening to his trainer, Chuck McGregor, doing a lot of things his way, not utilizing the jab as much as he possibly could have. James Gaines coming back after a long layoff and a shooting, hadn't fought since February of 96. Perhaps not the right fight back, a little rust on his part, little inexperience. Obed Sullivan, on the other hand, pushing that extra 70 pounds that Gaines had over him in this fight around the ring. Perhaps found him a little awkward. Not able to employ a lot of the things that Chuck McGregor would have liked him to do. A lot of the body punching that Obed Sullivan's known for seemed to be ineffective against the heavier Gaines. Nevertheless, the busier fighter, in my opinion, the better fighter tonight, Obed Sullivan. We hope you enjoyed our show here tonight of Heavyweight Explosion coming to you from the Roxy in Massachusetts. Sully, 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 Boston, Massachusetts, Sully. that is Obed Sullivan. Chant to the crowd. Question is now, who will Obed Sullivan fight? Perhaps when John Saracino interviews him, we'll get an idea of what's next on the agenda for the IBF Intercontinental Champ. They're totaling the scores right now. Supervisor Walter Stone looking over the score sheets. Nobody seems to really be questioning the outcome, though. Once again, unofficially, 117-112 on my card in Saracenos, and no knockdowns in the fight. Ring announcer still trying to total everything up. I wonder what's slowing things down. I'm sure J.J. Wright just wants to make sure that they have it perfect. He's down there. And here we go. They seem to have got it all figured out. We're going to go up to our ring announcer, J.J. Wright, with the official announcement. All right, here we go. The results of the main event. Our referee tags calls it 1-14, 1-14. That's a draw. Our next judge calls it 116-112 for Sullivan. And our next judge calls it 119-109 for Sullivan. A majority decision for Ed Sullivan. Well, there you have it. A bit of a surprise. Obed Sullivan winning a majority decision. One judge added 114-114. The other two, 116-112, 119-109. Obed Sullivan improving and keeping his intercontinental title improves to 19, one and one, remains at 13 knockouts in his fourth successful defense of the IBF intercontinental title. James Gaines dropping down a 12 and two, managing though to go to distance with Obed Sullivan. 
had his moments throughout the fight. Perhaps again, as we stressed earlier, not the right fight, fight back after the long layoff. Hadn't fought since February. Had gotten shot in a drive-by shooting. Gained a lot of weight. Took off 50 pounds for this weight. But we're going to go up. As we see a happy James Gaines, in spite of the loss. We're going to go up to my partner, John Saracino, who's with Obed Sullivan. Take it away, John. Okay, Arnie, there was a little bit of discrepancy among the judges. Did you think the fight was close at all? Um, well, I got to respect the judges. They they know what they're doing. You know, sometimes everyone doesn't see the fight out of, but hey, that man's a judge. That man's an official in Massachusetts. I'm not going to argue with him. Okay, so I know about, like I said, James Gaines may not look like Muhammad Ali, but as you can see, the kid throws a hard 12 rounds. Those body shots are like a patented seal tissue, so you can't blast them. And I'm a good body puncher. This is a tough fight. Now, Chuck McGregor, your trainer, wanted you to stick with the jab. You did it early on, but then you got away from it. What was your own thinking on that? Well, I'm, I'm a tough guy. United States Marine Corps, baby. Suck Marine Division. All right, Army, I see you out there. United States Marine Corps, Camp Lejeune. Hey, I'm going to come. I don't care if you're Mike Tyson. I don't care if you're King Kong. I may not be the biggest headway on earth, but nor was Holyfield. Uh, the cut. It's in the area from the Buster Mathis fight, but it's not the same cut, is it? I don't think so. I'm not sure, but I don't think so. Headbutts, and unintentional. You know, he comes in, steps with that jab. He's got a good jab. It wasn't on purpose. There was a little bit of action there. You got warned for the elbows, which you use very deftly at times to get a little bit of room you and leverage. Marine division. We're, we're hot on that Marine topic tonight. I bet Ken Norton's your favorite heavyweight yeah, fighter of all time, right? Yeah, uh, let's go back to the fight now. Uh, at the end, you definitely wanted to try to stop him. I mean, do you think it was to your advantage to be able to get a stoppage, no, or were you embarrassed no, no, that the no. guy went 12 rounds? I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. That wasn't to my advantage. My trainer didn't tell me to do that. Once again, Mr. Hardhead Marine. But I'm going to get out of that, folks. I'm not going to disappoint you. I'm going to break out of that hardheadedness. And Obed, tonight you were able to hit him at will with the left hook and you were throwing the right uppercut, which is your favorite punch. That was working a little bit, hand. too. I got a good right hand. Oh, you know, okay, well, I'm next time I'll throw, I'll stay with the left hook. Sorry about that. Okay, thanks a lot, Obed. Congratulations. You know what? I love you guys. You guys love Obed Sullivan, as we see him here, there's that right hand he's talking about. He does have a good right hand, acknowledging the fact that he didn't listen to Chuck McGregor, went off, did it his own way, said he's a hard-headed Marine, but nevertheless... Nevertheless, he's doing what he's got to do. And we're going to go up to John now, who's with James Gaines. Take it away, John. Okay, Arnie. James, what'd you think of the decision? Uh, they, they, they chose and he won. I lost. I just got to come back next time and says work hard. Now, one thing tonight, you wanted to have a quick start, come out faster. Normally a slow starter. You really didn't get that quick start and you got behind early, didn't you? Yes, I did. You no, know, I came out time. Like I always do. Just try to sit, just pace myself and just keep on going, you know. You know what I mean? And later rounds, let's just go ahead and take them, but it didn't work out that way. You seem to turn the tide of the fight towards the middle of the bout. You started landing more shots, throwing combination punches. Were you surprised that Sullivan remained on the inside instead of working outside with the jab? Not really. I knew he was going to try to keep uh, inside, keep on my body. You know, I. I I, I got a little weight on me, so, you know what I mean, most fighters going to go for it. But, you know what I mean, I don't worry about it. I just try my best, you know, and go for what I got to go for. What about the weight? You know, if viewers out there looking at you are saying, why isn't this guy in better shape? Because obviously you have better boxing skills. Is that a lack of discipline on your part? Maybe it is. And maybe not. I think it is a little bit. I, I do got to work harder. It's just common sense. I just got to get in there and work harder, and I'm just going to keep on doing it. James, thanks a lot. Arnie? Thanks a lot, John. James Gaines says he's got to work harder, and yes, he's got to work harder if he's going to take off that 30 or 40 pounds that we'd like to see him take off. Earlier today, our John Saracino caught up with the senior member of boxing, Lou Duva, talked about the Bogolata fight. Here's what Lou Duva had to say to John. Thanks. I'm here with manager and longtime corner man, veteran Lou Duva. Lou, thanks for being on the show tonight. 
What is the current status with heavyweight Andrew Galata? We know there's been some legal problems back in Poland. Can you update us on that? I think, it, uh, you know, as far as I got, I got wind of it, it was, a, you know, a fight in a bar, his friends, with some army guys over there. Nothing was ever done about it. Uh, he was supposed to uh, appear in court. Uh, they put the case off. Uh, he had uh, come over here to America, and that's as far as I know. The case is still pending. Uh, there's supposed to be outstanding warrants. Uh, I don't. I, I honestly don't know uh, what's going on with that there, but I think it'll be resolved now. Especially.